G'day and welcome to Matt's workshop. This is part seven of the DIY laser build. And in this episode, I'm gonna look at Cloudray Laser's mechanical lift parts. So we're gonna look at those parts that lift the Z axis or the laser bed up and down. We'll look at how to uh, fix them on the uh, machine itself, as well as the stepper motors and stepper drivers, the wiring of those, the limit switches, and the settings in the control panel. The control panel is a Trosen 708S, and we'll look at uh, using it to calibrate the movement of the Z axis. So the components of this uh, lift bed set for the Z axis, we have uh, four of these ball screws and we have uh, each ball screw has a bearing plate and a uh, bracket to attach the lift bed to. Now there's also some um, pulleys and uh, gears that we'll need. So on the bottom of the lift bed screw, the first thing we do is we can pop in the gear that goes on there. Uh, and these will need to have some locking grub screws in there to hold it into place so that it doesn't just keep slipping around. So it depends on how you want to mount it in your machine. You can just uh, bolt these into your machine and place your bearings onto the end of each shaft and uh, have it uh, working that way. But what I decided to do, because I want to use this aluminium T-slot, I've actually designed it so that I use an adapter plate. And it allows me to put on the T-slot nuts and uh, bolts. And that means that I can actually use it on the aluminium T-slot and I'll be able to move it up and down and then lock it into place when I'm happy with the positioning. So to install this, what I do is just slide that into the T-slot on the bottom, pop this one on the top, I found it easier just to do the top one first, so it holds it into place. So that's the installation there. We've got the T-slot nuts in there holding that in place, holding it onto the bracket. The gear is around there. Make sure you put the belt on. I've uh, obviously put it on before and forgot to put the belt on. It's nothing worse than having to pull everything apart again. And as you can see, if we hold this one in place and the screw moves, it goes up and down. Now the stepper motors that I'm using for the Z-axis are the lead shine motors and the model number is 57HS22. Now there's actually two of these stepper motors and one on each side of the lifting bed platform. Now they come, it's a bipolar or a uh, two-phase stepper motor and it comes with eight wires attached. So I've paired these out already and just uh, wrapped them together so that I know which pairs are which. And the way that you pair them is you put it on uh, resistance on your multimeter and you can just uh, pair across and it will either beep or give you a reading on the screen when you have a pair of wires. Now these obviously, if I select the orange and any other color, uh, I get no reading at all. So once they've been paired, you'll have a reading just on those pairs alone. We have, in this case, the pairs are the green and yellow, brown and black, orange and white, and the red and blue. Now the way that you wire up these is uh, via the wiring diagram, which you'll see on Cloudray Laser's website. So you select the A and the B pairs. So in this case, we have the red and blue, and the yellow and green is the A pair. And the other pair obviously being the B pair is the brown, black and orange and white. Now the A plus in this case is the uh, blue and the yellow. So we'll select one of each of those. So basically we're splitting, splitting those pairs into a plus and a minus. So once you've got your pairs, then the first thing that we need to do on one stepper motor is connect the blue and the yellow to A plus the red and the green to A minus, the brown and the orange to B plus, and the black and the white to B minus. Now we want these motors to spin in opposite directions because they're sitting on different sides of the laser bed and on different sides of the actual lifting set themselves. So to make the motor turn on the opposite side of the machine in the opposite direction, then what we want to do is the blue and the yellow we connect to A minus and then the red and the green go to A plus. So basically we're just swapping the A plus and the A minus around. So if we repeat that for the B set, we'll have the brown and the orange going to B minus, 
and the black and the white going to be plus. So what I have here is my um, 36 volt input coming into my stepper driver and then these connections here, these four connections, A plus, A minus, B plus and B minus, they go off to the stepper motors. And then one stepper motor will be connected in the opposite direction being that B plus is now B minus and A plus is A minus. And that way we have one turning uh, clockwise and the other one counterclockwise. So to make that easy, I've made the connections that run off to the stepper motors and then swap them at that point at the connection rather than back here at the controller. Now the way that I achieve this uh, for my machine is I have a cable running here to the stepper drivers and connected those to A plus etc all the way through to B plus and connected them into this terminal. So on one side the stepper motor is plugged into A plus A minus the way that I just showed you and then if we have a look over the other side we have the same connections but the A plus and the A minus have been swapped around for the other stepper motor. So the stepper driver that I'm using to control these two lift bed motors is the DMA860H and the motors are rated uh, to 5.4 amps so we'll set switches 1 to 3 to on off off and we'll set the pulses per revolution at the lowest possible to start with at 400 so we'll set switches 5 to 8 to on. Just a quick test of the Z motors going down and we'll have to fine tune them on the controller in a moment. So I've just been to pick up the frame for the laser bed so we'll pop that in and hopefully everything was measured up correctly. Okay so I've got the laser bed frame in and I've got it resting on the brackets here. Now before I fix them into place I need to make sure that it's level in both directions. So I'm using the autofocus pen at the moment and just tap, uh, touched it on the back edge of the laser bed here and uh, you can use the ball screws with the belt unattached to adjust the height of it until it just touches the bottom of the pen. So we just do that here so it's just touching the bottom of the pen there and it's not pressing up on it. So what I'll do is move this forward and we'll inspect that. So once you have it level on one side, well what you'll need to do is put the belt back on but we don't want to adjust these ball screws at all. So just mark those. So we could put a mark on the bottom of this one here and make sure that it doesn't move from that location as we're putting the belt back on and do the same on this one here. So once you've got these two gears in place and you've got the belt tight between those two then we just bring the belt tensioner back up against it so that it doesn't move and lock it into place. And then once you've got the, uh, it level on along this side, we need to make sure that it's level in the other direction. So we make sure that this is back in the center here and go across and do the same on the other side. So making sure that they're level uh, in both directions and then fixing it into place. So for the laser bed, I decided to use alloy fins to start with and I just ordered these from Cloudray Laser by letting them know the width and the length of the laser bed and the gap spacing that I wanted between each fin. Very easy to set up and install. So before we start doing any calibration, we need to set the Z axis speed. So we press menu, go down to seven, which is common parameter settings and press enter. And on the axis speed parameters, change Z to five millimeters. Escape out. And to get into the manufacturing settings, press stop and shift. Then go into axis parameters, press enter, and the Z axis parameters. And if we have a look down here, we also want to change the start speed to five millimeters. 
So I have this tape measure attached to the laser bed using a magnet to hold it in place and we're going to use that to measure the distance that the z-axis moves. So now what I want to do is um, move the laser bed down and we're going to move it down about 50 millimeters. So using the Z down button we move it down. Notice that if we look here it's currently at zero and I have zero on my rule. So press Z down and move it down about 50 millimeters. We can see here that that's now at 50 millimeters on the line and the z-axis believes it's moved 124.8 millimeters. So now we need to calibrate that. Now before I do that I'm going to just move the uh, laser bed back up to zero. So just holding down z up. So now with it back up we will go back into the system parameters or the manufacturing parameters by pressing the stop and the shift button go into axis parameters, Z axis. So we have a look here where it's got distance per pulse and it's currently set at 6.5. So what we want to do is press enter and we enter in the expected length. So the expected length is 124.8 millimeters. And the actual length it moved was only 50 millimeters. So once we have those settings in place we press enter to save and it will change the calculation up the top here. The distance per pulse is now only 2.6. So now what we'll do is press escape and we will test that out. So with our z-axis at zero and our ruler on zero we'll move the laser uh, bed down 50 millimeters. And that's stopped on 50 millimeters. And as you can see on the screen here, it's also on 50 millimeters. So we've now calibrated our Z-axis. So for the lower Z-axis limit, I've installed a lever limit switch and that gets connected to the control board for the Z plus connection for the limits. So Z plus is the lower limit and Z minus is the upper limit, which I have the autofocus pen attached to. So thanks for visiting Matt's workshop. I'm going to have a quick walk around of the machine now and show you some of the features that have been installed since the uh, previous episode. So we saw it's got a Trosen 708S controller and uh, just to personalize it a little bit I've put my website there which you can visit mwlaser.com.au. Uh, some of these components for the laser build were uh, provided by Cloudray Laser so I've also included their logo on the front there. So as we can see here I've got the red autofocus pen which I'm using as my upper Z limit and that's been wired into the control panel as I mentioned to the Z minus connection on the limit switches. Uh, through the grill there you can see the stepper motor for uh, the uh, right hand side and over here we have the other left hand motor with the belts and everything attached. Now I have uh, down the back corner there got an air vent put in and it's for uh, airflow. I've also started to enclose the machine with the aluminium sheeting. On this side of the machine I've just enclosed it uh, with the aluminium sheeting because there's nothing in there that I need to access again. If I do I can just unscrew that sheet. On the back of this acrylic sign here because it's in the path of the laser beam I've also included a piece of uh, aluminium sheeting so that if the laser beam does actually pass uh, off from the mirror it doesn't melt the acrylic. So anywhere where there's a laser beam on this machine I've tried to make sure that we have a non-combustible material in the path of the laser beam. So we have mirror one sitting here and that has been uh, aligned as we saw in the previous video with the uh, mirrors and uh, the laser tube mounts. So at the back of that air vent we have the six inch uh, tube coming out the back which will get attached to this uh, new six inch fan which arrived today and that will be installed. I also have this new uh, carbon filter it's got a six inch outlet and I'll have a look at maybe uh, implementing that in my design. 
Now the uh, water flow sensor is still sitting there. It hasn't been attached yet, as well as the air pump, just so that it can be moved around. All these will get uh, fitted and placed correctly once the laser tube is installed. And on this side of the machine, I've tidied up the uh, power inlets and outlets and also installed some connections for water in and water out, making sure that they're lower than the electrical circuit themselves. And the electrical cabinet will have uh, some sort of enclosure with some cooling for uh, airflow to those electrical components. So we're getting towards the tail end of this uh, DIY laser build. Still waiting for a, uh, a water chiller, which I need to order. And uh, once I have the water chiller and some sort of water supply, I'll be able to install the laser tube and do some alignments there. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, press the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I release more videos for this laser build and other videos in the future. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Otherwise, you can visit my website for more of the information on the DIY laser build at mwlaser.com.au. In the description below, I'll also put a link to Cloudray Laser's website where you can get some of these components. And until next time, take care. Cheers.